Thank you, Dr. Vijay. Thanks, the organizers. I think it's a bit disheartening to see only so many in the audience. Um, I don't know how to complete this 30 minutes talk. So we are going to discuss uh, guideline directed medical therapy, uh, initiation and continuation. Everyone knows uh, now the guidelines have become very crystallized in this management. So there is a little gray area related to uh, the initiation and the continuation. So we'll see some aspects of those. Actually, we've gone through a lot in the last two, three years, and this is the stage even I reached this stage of Mujhe webinar nahi chahiye. And it's glad that at least some hybrid thing is happening. But we are still not uh, out of this masking business and we shall continue to do so for some more time. In heart failure management uh, in the late 90s, we managed, uh, we thought, we realized that beta uh, high sympathetic tone was a problem and a drug which was totally contraindicated, beta blocker, became the drug of choice because sympathetic system was creating a, creating a havoc in heart failure people. The other system was, which was heightened was the RAS system. And if you could block that with the ACE inhibitor and the olden trials are all related to ACE inhibitors, that brought in some benefit. Till about 10 years ago, it wasn't realized that uh, this uh, nitrolytic peptide system gets enhanced uh, or it gets suppressed in heart failure. And if you enhance it by some means or the other, probably you would get benefit in the heart failure treatment. So they tried with uh, neprilacin inhibitors, uh, but it did not work. So finally, they combined a secubitril, which is a neprilacin inhibitor with a valsartan, the ARB, because the combination with ACE inhibitor was causing too much angioneurotic edema. So this combination finally worked, and it's now known as the ERNI. Uh, and ERNI has revolutionized the management of heart failure. Paradigm was a trial which brought in paradigm shift in the way we managed uh, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And ERNI found a big uh, foundation pillar in the management. Nowadays, in fact, what was a very disheartening uh, disease to treat in the past has become a very rewarding uh, disease because we see patients who had ejection fraction of 30% now coming back with normal ejection fractions. We have patients who have gotten off the transplant list because their EFs have improved. And if you put the foundational therapy correctly, and if the patient has a disease like a cardiomyopathy, hypertensive heart disease, where the, there is no scar, the heart is not dead, they improve remarkably, like a puerperal cardiomyopathy. They can do very well with this kind of a treatment. And it is one of the rewarding diseases that we are treating nowadays. So the foundational therapy was ACE, ARB, and ERNI was one base. The MRA, that is spironolactone, and epilirinone group, that is a second base, because this is the only diuretic which brings in disease modification. It prevents the ventricular remoduling. Loop diuretics will give you symptom relief, but MRAs will give you long-term related to myocardial fibrosis. Beta blocker had anyway revolutionized in the past. The best mortality benefit in heart failure comes through beta blocker. So that would be always the first drug to start with, despite its limitation. And the new dapagliflozin heralded onto the scene with the DAPA-HF trial. It was a momentous victory in the war against heart failure. And if you put these four foundational treatments into management, you can do wonders to the patient. In fact, it almost works like a symphony, wherein all violin is put together rather than a singular one, make the things work very well. So if you give one year outpatient mortality and combinations of foundational medical therapy for heart failure, the red bar here is no treatment, only ACE inhibitor beta blockers, ACE ARBs and something else, only ARBs and the foundational therapy. That brings in your best mortality benefit. So combination therapies, all four of them 
combine, uh, then uh, titrate them uh, within a span of three to four weeks. You should have all the four drugs at the best possible doses. Initiate first and then titrate is what we are looking at nowadays. And now going beyond the guideline directed therapy, the two drugs which are on the horizon, one is the very Sigvat, which will be available in this week for management. This is a for people who are worsening heart failure. Somebody had a admission or is now going home after a, a, a acute decompensated heart failure. That is where very Sigvat comes into picture. And we always struggle with people with hypotension, where you can't start earning, you can't start beta blocker, you can't start too many diuretics. Then that is a drug which is omicaptive mecarbil, which is like a let's say modern day digitalis, it's also on the scene, but today the talk is on GDMT, so I'll restrict myself to the first foundational therapies. So if you have a HEF ref, that is reduced EF, you start with a ASARB and a beta blocker, definitely. You can add a evabridin to a great extent, a great advantage, because many a time beta blockers drop the blood pressure and the heart rate advantage is not achieved. So you are on a carbidilol 3.125 twice a day, but the heart rate is sitting on 84 and the blood pressure on 100. You can't increase the carbidilol. So then you add a evabradin, suddenly the heart rate becomes 60, 65, and there is a remarkable benefit related to that. So with or without beta blockers, you would be evabradin. Then your MRAs, uh, definitely. And then on the side, you have a rehabilitation, comorbid uh, management like diabetes, fluid management, electrolyte management, and IV iron, I think this is one of the changing, uh, really changed uh, major therapy in heart failure. Whether the patient is anemic or not, nowadays we and one has to spend, send what is called as a iron profile, rather than a lipid profile, uh, other than the lipid profile, you said an iron profile. And if you find that the ferritin levels are low, intravenous iron can bring about remarkable changes in them. So just once in three months, once in six months of IV iron makes a lot of difference. Oral iron doesn't work in this situation. So you have to give this uh, specialized IV iron, which is, uh, shall we say, has very little side effects and can be instituted very well in a smaller nursing homes as well. And or in order, other, that other drugs will be isosorbate dinitrates, so when all this fails, then you go on to the ICDs, the CRTPs, the ECMOs, the F left ventricular assist devices, and the transplant. But the GDMT is in the foundational four, uh, and as I said, dipagliflozin is added to it. So the GDMT is a forefront in the management of heart failure patient. You can check the only the uh, yellow box. The key goals of GDMT is up titration, no, to target doses, introduction of newer therapies, and evidence-based approach to comorbidities. The ACC 2021 consensus recommendation is that GDMT is a foundation of heart failure care, and GDMT with the highest expected benefit should be prioritized, which all of us understand very well. The gray zone related to this was a patient who was getting discharged from the hospital. There's a hypotension, not many drugs are well tolerated, too many symptoms, but there are a lot of trials which were initiated right inside the hospital with a blood pressure of less than, less than 85, less than 100, less 80, 90, all these were initiated. And now we are at a good post-discharge strategy wherein we know that if you have most of the drugs on board at the end of one week, if you initiate them inside the hospital at the end of one, one month, they're more likely to be continue it, more likely to tolerate the medicine, there will be prescription which is honored, they are likely to adhere to the prescription and persist with it and feel better. All this can happen if you start the foundational pillars inside the hospital. And the best part is of the SGLT2, whether it can be started with the same dose, no titration required, 10 milligrams started and continued for heart failure management, whether other doses would require a lot of adjustment to be done. So they are thinking, or we have been already instructed to change the sequence of events. For example, as I said, one would invariably start a beta blocker with or without evabradin, and the second need not be ERNI. Second could be an SGLT2 inhibit because it doesn't drop blood pressure. 
So the sequence doesn't have to be monotherapy add, monotherapy add, but start with a sequence of not hemodynamically disturbing drugs. And finally, at the end of four weeks, you should have uptitrated all the four foundational pillars. So the recent ACC 2021 consensus recommends initiation of GDMT as early as possible and to manage these heart failure patient in this manner. See, if you don't give uh, the GDMT, that is lack of GDMT, it can have clinical outcomes which are very startling. You can see the curves, the yellow one is where the GDMT was offered and the blue curve indicates too much events because the GDMT was not offered. The lack clearly shows higher risk of mortality and this is an Indian uh, patient studies from Kerala. Lack of GDMT was associated with increased risk of mortality in these patients. You can see the two curves clearly separating out. Lack of GDMT was associated with higher risk of hospitalization and emergency visits. Why everyone is harping on this heart failure hospitalization is because now a new drug which comes in cannot show great mortality benefit because already the established therapy is so good that for a new drug in a short span and legally you cannot do a trial without the existing GDMT. To show the benefit beyond that, the new drug has to do something else and that is heart failure hospitalization. That is because 85% of the expenditure of a heart failure patient comes through hospitalization abroad. We are ab figures abroad, but that could be true in India also. So major reduction in cost saving and of course every hospitalization adds to the risk of mortality. And that's why any drug which reduces heart failure hospitalization, this is what Ernie did when it came in. This is what SGLT2 inhibitors are did, doing this way. And even the very Sigwart which is coming also does the same, reduces in the heart failure hospitalization. So the implications of continuing, we saw that if you don't give, patients are harmed. And if you don't continue, 35% increase in the risk of mortality in patients discontinuing GDMT. You feel, aha, patient's EF has improved. It was 25, now he's 45, his functional class improved. Then there is always a temptation to reduce the GDMT, especially because of the cost concern. But that is where this study comes into uh, help, that if you reduce that or don't continue in proper doses, you can increase the mortalities. Again, discontinuation of GDMT increase the risk of readmission for HFREF patients. Discontinuation increases the risk of all-cause mortality in post-hospital hospitalization patients. The uh, figures are quite startling to, for you to see. In a nutshell, initiation and discontinuation of GDMT keeps the HFREF patient alive and live longer stands to reason because what we saw in the earlier slides today. So what is the GDMT which you could choose to initiate and continue? I have alluded to it already. The uh, ESC 2021 guidelines recommend ERNI as the first line cornerstone therapy for all HFREF patients. As I said, based on the patient's hemodynamics, blood pressure, heart rate, these things can change. You don't have to be stickler of the sequence offered here. You are, uh, if you are a good clinician, you will use all the four drugs to great advantage based on whatever sequence that comes to your mind best. And the new 20, 20, 2019 ESC guidelines have given one A recommendation for the uh, SGLT2 inhibitors. Same is true for the ACCAH also. So we are now talking of five pillars of HFREF management, whether there is diabetes or no diabetes. So first pillar would be ACE, ARB, let's say ERNI, because hardly ever we are using plain ACE inhibitors or ARB these days. So it has to be ERNI to start with. Beta blockers with or without evabradine. MRAs definitely. So your prescription may not include a loop diuretic, but must include a spironolactone or a aplerinone. I prefer sp uh, spironolactone because it is cheaper. Aplerinone at least 10 times more expensive and has very little advantage of a, uh, less gynecomastia. And of course, it has become imperative to use the SGL2 inhibitors, especially dipagliflozin, in reduced EF. In preserved EF, we are using, tending to use more empagliflozin. So there is initiation evidence related to uh, ERNI as a first-line drug. Uh, brings in remarkable reduction in mortality, remarkable reduction in heart failure hospitalization. And fortunately now, 
we have indian data about which we can talk of so 20% reduction in the risk of cv death with arni compared to nl april irrespective of the glycemic status and this being a diabetic conference i have to keep saying that i was actually quite reluctant to use the sglt2 inhibitor in non diabetics to start with worried about hypoglycemia and other aspect but i think it's quite safe now i'm uh, quite a prolific user of these sglt2 inhibitors so the in treatment definitely contains uh, the four pillars which i was alluding to and as long as the egfr is above 25 to 30 you are safe because the heart failure with the egfr of 30 will improve if you improve the heart failure there a lot of element of cardio renal aspect so rather than getting putting off by the egfr implement it in correct doses and you will find that egfr improves because the heart failure is improved so to summarize uh, go with the guidelines time is essential to start uh, a guideline directed medical therapy very early continue with uh, our needs and other things with confidence even if there is a borderline hypotension egfr low and other things and there are there is funny thing related to level of evidence i like this slide and usually end my talks with this slide see if you look at the top there is mathematics and at the bottom there is philosophy god rebirth karma this is typical indian stuff emotional stuff we talk of and if you put the evidences like that it is 1 a mathematics is still 2 plus 2 is still 4 and philosophy is 2d so you can keep talking hours about philosophy because nobody can question you on that but medicine that we practice is to be that means it is fluid what we talk 5 years ago may not hold true today because the evidence keeps changing and that is where i stand today today i feel gdmt for heart failure has really established itself with phenomenal results putting the four pillars and the side therapies like iv iron becomes very important for the patient and we've had patients who have done remarkably well have become absolutely normal individuals after few months of therapy so the conviction has to be there the knowledge base has to be there the information is there in the books that has to get converted to knowledge and finally wisdom will dawn on to us that if we implement it very well we can do wonders to our patients so i shall stop here thank you very much